Hi everyone, it's Sally and I'm in my backyard again. Uh, I've made a couple revisions to the Bionic Gear Bag pattern. It's now called Bionic Gear Bag version 1.1 and it's got a couple added goodies and I've got another surprise for you today too, another new pattern. And I want to do this video over again in its entirety so that if anybody sees this one and they only see this one, they're not missing out. So those of you that saw the original video, bear with me. And before I get started, I really want to thank everyone that's been in my corner the last six weeks. It's been a wild and crazy fun ride, and I've got a lot of you to thank for that. So anyway, let's get going. I'm going to show you the bag again. Okay, just like before, the bag opens up and it makes a tray in front. Um, it's sealed off on the corners so that you have um, a nice closed-in space so that when this is sitting next to you while you're sewing at a retreat or in a class or something or even in your RV where it's a real hassle if you're trying to climb under the table to grab something that fell off the table, um, this keeps everything from rolling off or scooting off the table. Now since I made the first video, I've done a couple things a little different. First is, is that I have two pouches that store everything that I use all the time. So in the first bag, you'll remember, this little short zipper pouch here was meant to hold sewing machine needles. Well, I've got a surprise for you for that, and you can still use it for sewing machine needles, but maybe you'll like my new idea. And then everything in this back section right here, too, are the things that I use all the time. So let me set the bag up. First, I've got my magnetic pin dish. This was one of the main reasons the Bionic Gear bag was made in the first place, was to conveniently hold this. I won't go sewing anywhere without it. The next thing, in our first bag we had a little square fabric dish and it's meant to hold wonder clips. It's got snaps on the back. This pattern is still included with the Bionic Gear bag. It's a freebie out there. But what I did is I made a better one. I've now got a zippered pouch. Still has the magnets. And when you unzip it, it forms a wide open bowl. Now this might, I still like Wonder Clips, but if you want to maybe put your sewing machine feet or something that you're a little more nervous about losing and you want them a little more secure, you could use the pouch for that. The other thing is, depending on what you pack in your bag, you probably could put a second one of these pouches in your bag too. So you can make as many of those as you'd like. Now I still used the magnetic clips on the back side, so it still snips in here, snaps in, like that. Now one of the other things I want to give you a quick tip on is when I was making the zipper pouch, this is the first one I've made, um, it was after about three tries to get it the way I wanted it, but I was so concerned about getting the zipper in right and having it make the right shape and everything, I wasn't messing around with putting the snaps on it. So as an afterthought, I still wanted to put snaps on this bag, so what I did is I took a pair of pliers and I broke off the prongs on the magnetic snap on the side that goes on the uh, pouch. Now you probably could do it on the other side too. So if you ever build one of these and you forget to put the snap on, this is really not a big deal. What I did is I used some E6000 and just glued them on and they're just fine. E6000 is really great stuff. So there's your little band-aid fix of the day and to be honest with you, I kind of think it's a better way to attach the snaps anyway. Well let's get back to the bag. So like I said, everything I use most frequently is in this pouch and in this one. So in this one, I have rulers and a bodkin, a purple thing, another ruler, and in this one I've got a my favorite seam ripper. And what I like to do is I park that right here to the front, and I'll show you in a second. And then another favorite thing is a five inch pair of Ginger shears. I just really like that for snipping corners and tails and things. And that's everything in that pouch. And now when the seam ripper is parked in here, if you don't push it down hard, you can easily get your seam ripper in and out of here without having to take two hands to take the cap off. I also have an Alex Anderson point turner. I really like that thing. I've got a walking foot. Whoopsie. Got a walking foot. Park it back here. Got a little cute thumb drive. And a screwdriver. Now, if I was sitting at a class, this is as unpacked as I get. Without talking, this takes you all of about 15 seconds to unpack, but 
I'm showing you everything. It takes a little longer. So that's as cute and organized as it looks while you're sewing next to it. It's pretty impressive. Now a couple more features of the bag is inside here it'll hold seven spools of thread. Okay? And I happen to keep my thread with, now these are even big Orofil brand spools. They're kind of tall. But I keep them with a golf tee and a bobbin on top. And so they're all organized with their corresponding bobbins. But these zippers were put up at a height to protect this. This was all in mind when I made this bag is so that these spools of thread could stand like that, stay organized, stay clean, be protected. Now alternately, if you like carrying, I'm going to take a few of these things out. If you like this type of bobbin case instead, if you take three spools of thread out, you could easily park that in there. And you probably could put another zipper pouch there too if you wanted to, a little one of the little dishes. But that's an alternate thing. So now let me take everything out of the bag to show you what it holds. And I still have that surprise in store for you too. So I have seven spools of thread. Again, thread is my favorite thing to forget when I go to a class. So it's nice having a variety that'll work for me, even if I don't remember to bring the perfect color. Now the bag is also meant to have one thin, it has one thin pouch here, and it's meant to hold scissors and protect them. So this little pocket here is thin enough and perfect for shears. Got a tape measure in here. And then here are some things I don't use quite as much, but at least they're here and I know exactly where they are. I've got pens, pencils, a quarter inch ruler, markers, fabric markers, bodkins, tweezers, did I say that? A lot of extra goodies here. And then in this back one, a few things I don't use as frequently. Needles, hand needles, hate using those, so they're tucked. I have a pair of hemostats just in case I need them for uh, turning zippers. When the zipper is still on the machine and you have a hard time getting your fingers in there to move the head of the zipper to sew on to the next spot, a hemostat's really handy. And then I have a heavy pair of Ginger utility shears and I use those to cut zippers and things. I don't want to ruin my good scissors. Push this back just a hair. And then since we talked last, I bought a smaller rotary cutter that I just leave in here and I leave my big fat ginger at home. But I usually don't cut stuff too much when I'm off at a class. So I have all that in here. Now here's the surprise I promised. Instead of putting the needles in here, I made a needle wallet. And this one has all the Moda bobbins and bits fabrics that are my favorite. Um, Pat Sloan, this is for you. And inside it holds the needle cases, there's a little vinyl pouch here that holds these needle cases. So it'll hold four packs of ten and four packs of fives. So that's quite a variety. And then the really good feature of it is I have this grid and it's all quilted and each little section's its own little pillow. And what it's meant to do is you can park your used needles in this and you can keep them labeled and you know exactly what they are. Now I realize Schmetz is starting to put color bands on needles, but it still means you have to look at a chart to try to remember what it was, or you have to have a needle uh, package that would show it, but I think this is nicer. I like this, okay? And then these extra little pins that are in here, these are meant to mark what needle is currently in your machine. So right now I've got a size 75 universal in one of my sewing machines right now. Okay, and I'm going to bring this in so hopefully will focus. Now the coolest thing ever is that you can print on fabric through an inkjet printer and if you haven't done it the quilters have been hardcore geeks on this for a while. They make some of their quilt labels this way. What you do is you take fabric and you press it down to freezer paper and then you can run it through your inkjet. inkjet. Now the pattern includes instructions for that as well as I've got the PDF for this grid in the pattern so that you can print out and have this same grid and you don't have to go through the brain damage of creating it. So this is going to be a separate pattern on Craftsy, but it's meant to fit perfectly in that back pocket. So all of this fits in the Bionic gear bag now. And let me zoom it out a little so there's everything that was in there. 
Okay, I found um, I found some great tips on Instagram. I'd be really great if you join me over there. I'm Rip Stitcher on Instagram, or you can catch up to me on BionicGearBag.com, and my personal website is RipStitcher.com. And another quick little thing is over on BionicGearBag.com. I've got a newsletter sign-up form. You should join the list. When I launch new patterns, I try to run some really good specials for the first three days they're up. So please be on my list if you want to score some of the new stuff on the cheap. Otherwise, the patterns are available on Craftsy, and I hope you try one. The only thing more fun than building one is owning one, and um, it's pretty impressive, and sure is nice being organized when you go to classes, retreats, or if you keep a sewing machine with you when you go on an RV. And it's also a great gift for people that have sewing machines that they drag out on their dining room tables. If you have a friend like that, you can make her one of these bags and then she can keep all of her sewing gear with the machine so when she pops it up, it's all convenient. So there you have it. Thanks everyone again. I've had a great six weeks and I'm on to a few more new ideas. Love you all. Have a great day.